Um, like Dave, I won't probably need it. <laughs> um, do we think on or off? On! on. 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 Oh, I thought that was going to happen. <laughs> um, the worst thing about being Dave's best man, in fact the only bad thing about it, is having to follow him when he does a speech, so I'm slightly furious right now. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, it, is, it is obviously an honour to be here to speak to you all this evening um, and to have this wonderful opportunity to humiliate my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my understanding of what a best man's speech is, that's right, isn't it? I just got to check. Um, I have like 400 of these, so <laughs> I'll go through them as quick as I can. Um, my name is Ben, for those of you who don't know me. Like, uh, like my friend Dave, I'm shy and retiring. <laughs> I don't really like being the centre of attention, so I'll try and get through this as quickly as possible. If you're all very kind to me, I'll just get off and you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> this won't take as long as it could have done. So, the sheer volume of anecdotes and stories, which, for want of a better term, would humiliate David, is just out of this world. <laughs> just one of those people. We've all we've all been out with him. We all know what happens. Um, so I wrote a, I wrote a first draft of the speech. It's called the No Speech. It's about 300 pages long. It weighs about three kilos. Um, it's essentially a dossier of everything that uh, all the dirt I've got on this guy. Um, it will be for sale. Uh, so bidding will start. One large glass of red. I'm very cheap. Um, Sue, I don't think you should bid. <laughs> <laughs> just for safety's sake. Um, of course, in all honesty, I am genuinely and truly honoured to be Dave's best man. Uh, and the things he said about me are all lies because I'm not that nice. Um, but uh, to, to hear your friend talk about you like that on a day like this is, is quite something. Um, and the chance to speak to all of you on Dave and Sam's big day is, is a massive honour. Um, so apologies in advance. Um, <laughs> I think we can all agree as well, the day has been wonderful so far. Yeah. Yeah. This is like, I mean, I hadn't seen this venue. Uh, and I was blown away by the castle. And then you walk around the corner and you see down there and you see the lake. So it's just incredible. And you guys, I mean, the work that I know you and your extended family and friends have put in, it's just mind blowing. What an incredible day and congratulations on that. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing Sam now for a few short years. Um, three and a bit, it's probably not the whole four because you were quite a long way away for a while. Um, <laughs> And I think we can all see why she captured Dave's heart. Why she would want to? <laughs> completely different question. Um, it's all in the dossier, Sam, if you want to bid. Um, Sam, I know it's traditional on these days, you, you say how incredible people are. Honestly, you look, I mean, just out of this world. It's amazing. Hey, hey, um, hey, you hey. obviously. Um, it's, and, you know, it's your special day, you should look incredible, but you're quite good looking anyway, so that's an advantage. <laughs> um, punch you below your weight. <laughs> In the time it's been my, um, my privilege to know you, and, and have the, I'm so lucky that I get to call you a friend now, which is wonderful. Um, uh, you are a wonderful person, and you truly deserve to be with the man of your dreams for the rest of your life. And I promise not to rest until we work out what the hell went wrong. <laughs> We can get to the bottom of this, we'll sort that out, don't you worry. Uh, in all seriousness, it's a chance for me to, to stand here in front of the, the people you care about and say thank you um, on behalf of all of us for making the guy that we care about so much so, so very happy. Uh, I've never seen him so happy, not even close in my whole life, and it just, it's just the most wonderful thing to see. Um, your bridesmaids, your charming bridesmaids, uh, one of whom I met yesterday, um, in yeah. less than flattering circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> had a very big night on champagne the night before. Uh, I saw Jill very briefly in between trips upstairs. Um, <laughs> Jill and, uh, and Sarah um, Lamb, as I believe you are known. Uh, I didn't, when they said you had a bridesmaid called Sarah, I had no idea who I was looking for. Uh, and Laura. Um, you, all, you all look beautiful, as, and I'm sure you're very grateful for the choice of dress. Um, it's one of those things where, because I'd never met you before, I asked Sam to tell me, just, just describe in a few words what, what your bridesmaids mean to you. Uh, and she, she sent me a lovely message back. Um, brutal. <laughs> it's a pretty promising start, isn't it? Uh, honest and sincere. Uh, true friends who tell it like it is with minimal eye rolling. <laughs> and actually, that's a big deal to be able to say about your friends. That's quite a, quite a thing. And, and obviously, you know, she loves you very much and it speaks volumes uh, of Sam as a person. Yes, she has such wonderful people to call on on days like this. Um, David, I don't need to tell you how lucky you are to have such a, a wonderful, inspiring, beautiful best friend like me. Uh, <laughs> I've, 
known Dave. <laughs> that was for all the people who've known me a long time. Um, I've known Dave since we first formed a formidable strike partnership on the school playing fields in our first year at St. Bart's. Um, the Gary Lineker resemblance doesn't stop at the uh, the cheeky grin and the boy's good looks. He's actually a very good finisher. Um, have these gone out of order? <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't. Um, I'm just misreading it. Um, he he used to score a lot of goals when we played football. He actually he's got all sorts of records for junior football and stuff, which I choose not to remember because he was a lot better than me. Um, <laughs> but then he discovered that kicking people was so much more fun than scoring goals. <laughs> And then he discovered that he's a lot quicker, more agile, and has better stamina than everyone else. So he'd kick you, and you couldn't catch a little sod to get him back. <laughs> this, was, this was my entire... I gave up football. I wasn't very good anyway, but you can't play football with the guys doing that to you every day. Outrageous. Um, we became firm friends very quickly. Uh, I moved to Australia at age 12, so we been friends for like a year and a bit. Uh, and Dave did me the kind of honour that has brought stronger men than me to tears. He named his hamster after me. <laughs> <laughs> and we laughed, but I'm actually, I'm really touched. Um, although it died shortly after. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, may have killed him. Um, these were, and it, when I was in Australia, these were the heady days before, you know, the, the interweb and clever phones. I'm very techy. Uh, Skype, FaceTime, all that kind of thing. So every month or two, uh, my parents would let me call home. And you have that massive delay on the line, it's really exciting. And Dave was always the person I chose to call. Uh, and you know, I'd, I'd only known him for a year and a half. It's a bit weird, really. Um, <laughs> and when I came back from Australia after three years, you have to imagine the most popular kid in a school of like 1,600 people, which was helpful to me. Um, and he was, he was so popular, everyone loved him, and he immediately just took me under his wing, and it's the person Dave is, is the guy as a friend who just says, no problem, I'll cash in some of my chips, because I wasn't very nice. Um, and he, school friends actually laughing at that, because they know. Um, and he took me under his wing and helped me to integrate straight away. That's the kind of friend he's been to me for 27 years. Wow. Stop pointing at him, Eddie, we all know it's true. <laughs> uh, and he helped me settle straight back in. Um, before I say anything to make you look silly, um, which that may or may not happen, um, you have always been the best friend, a, a big-headed, stumpy-legged, uh, Tyrion look-alike, that's for you. Uh, Muppet like me could ever have, and I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for everything you've always done for me. Um, now, as I mentioned, we were friends in a time before text messaging, uh, before all this, these smartphones and stuff. Uh, there'd be people who are too young to remember that. Uh, think of it as a magical, mystical time when penny sweets actually cost a penny. It was wonderful. Um, and we used to like to talk to each other in class, but obviously we, we couldn't talk openly in class, we discovered, because we'd get getting in trouble. Uh, eventually, our history teacher literally, he tried separating us by like three people, but our mode of communication could transcend that, so he actually just kicked one of us out of the class and put them in another class. Um, so what we used to do um, was, well, it was this. <laughs> this is a real one. This is the, oh one God. of the real from we were. This is actually, sadly, when I read this, you're going to be embarrassed. We were, I think, 17. <laughs> <laughs> this is on loan from the Newbury Museum of Natural History. It's a, uh, a pre-digital text conversation. Wow. What you can see is, it's very clever. It's, it's very high tech. The, the conversation goes down the page, and then you can do this, and it's like smaller, and you can get a whole lesson out of one of these. It's absolutely brilliant. And what I thought I'd do was just. Um, just read a little bit of a couple of things. <laughs> These were, this is just a daily conversation that we were having. Um, I'm not going to read some of this, because some of this is going to get me, you, Eddie, a lot of us in trouble. Um, but I was, uh, at the time, I was, uh, had a crush on a young lady. Uh, and Dave was giving me dating advice. Dave didn't find it hard with the girls at school. They all liked him. He just never wanted to pick one. Um, and he never did, don't worry. Uh, so he was... Um, he was giving me advice about what to do about this girl. She was seeing somebody else. Names are redacted, just in case, because there'll be people who know the people. Um, <laughs> these were Dave's words to me. You've got to try and be patient with her while she's going out with a hum. And be there for her when she breaks up. <laughs> <laughs> then move in for the kill. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> You're quite a dating guru, anyway. Uh, Dave, Dave I, I asked him during the conversation, so how's it going? Uh, and he said, fine, I think. He was always very relaxed about relationships, Dave, back in the day. 
Um, still don't fancy anyone in particular, but that isn't bad because we break up for Christmas next week. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't even know what that means. Did you just want to buy someone a present? <laughs> and the saddest thing is when he put, uh, me, you and Eddie still going to the ball together. <laughs> We all went stag to the uh, to the Leavers Ball. We were rock and roll. Um, okay. Uh, so 27 years of best friends. Been through a lot. Um, a lot of nights of. Oh, it was so rock and roll. Blackadder and beer and championship manager till three o'clock in the morning. We were so hardcore. Um, Eddie used to cave at midnight because that was just after my sister had served us burgers and pizza. So Eddie would stay for the food, then head to bed, and we'd stay up. The reason we'd stay up is because Dave, if anyone knows this game, Championship Manager, Football Management Simulation, he's such an Everton fan, he always wanted them to have a brilliant Brazilian centre forward. <laughs> he would sit there for hours searching for any Brazilian who would sign for Everton. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, Giovanni dos Santos. Correct. That was the name of the guy. I just remembered that like when I was writing this. It was amazing. Um, I could also claim, my big claim to fame is I've seen the final performance, assuming nothing goes horribly wrong tonight, of David's signature dance to Queen's Don't Stop Me Now. Um, he, actually, he actually retired it. In all seriousness, after one night out, he came and he sat me down when we were both home and said, I'm not doing that anymore, I've got to retire it. Uh, and it was because of the genuine physical danger. It used to attract huge crowds. And it was, a, it was so much physical danger to these people. He was like, I can't do it anymore, I'm actually going to hurt somebody. <laughs> but I'm just saying it because if anyone wants to goad him into it later, no. it's not going to happen. It won't happen. He's properly retired. Like, that's got to be 10 years ago. Yeah, amazing. Um, and it's, it's quite sad. I'm not sure you've got the stamina anymore. But, um, and one of mine my family's and my grandmother's favourite memories of Dave. Um, as he said, it was kind of like, he, he, he was always like a, another son, the favourite son to my parents. Um, and uh, he would, um, we, he came over to ours on Christmas Eve, Eddie was there as well. And we actually, this is, um, a bit of this was used during Eddie's best man speech, because he was embarrassing during that evening as well. Um, and we played a game of charades, traditional family game of charades. Uh, and Dave took one and he looked at it and he read it. And he stood up and he said, I'm going to need a volunteer. Enid, and he went over to my grandmother, at the time was probably pushing 80. Uh, and he took her to the centre of the dance floor and proceeded to mime dirty dancing. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, it was spectacular. She still asks after you, by the way. Uh, we've been on many holidays. Um, lots of holidays together. Um, and when not looking for Shiraz, who had inevitably oh. got lost again, <laughs> Someone keep an eye on him tonight, for goodness sake. Um, when we weren't trying to sink canal boats on the Norfolk Broads, uh, Dave with a broken arm trying to steer us out of a current while I was literally holding onto the side of a thing to stop us being swept into a bridge. It was absolutely spectacular. We've never been on a boat since. Uh, discovering Raki in Crete. If you've ever, never had Raki, don't have it. There you go. Um, we always had a great time, so the stag do is hugely important to me. It, it had to go smoothly, and as Dave said, I'm not entirely known for my organisational mm. skills. Mm. Um, the suit thing, he's not kidding. I, I got my final fitting for my suit yesterday morning. Um, <laughs> I had it all in hand. I don't know what you were worried about. Um, so, gentlemen of the stag, if you'd all be upstanding briefly. <laughs> Uh, I would just quickly like to congratulate you all for your courage, stamina, <laughs> impeccable renditions of Wonderwall, uh, jet skiing ability, and I'd like to give a special mention to Big Jeff. So here's to Big Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I'm saying about Big Jeff. Uh, Sam, you can tell people right later, buddy. <laughs> Unbelievable. Sam had a friend there the whole time. You can all sit down. Um, and the Dot Brown wig, sensational work with the Dot Brown wigs. We were very chuffed with, um, Phil was awesome with organising all of the, the costume stuff for Dave. And we, we put some mean stuff on him, but his final costume was um, from Back to the Future um, Part 2. And it's, he absolutely loved wearing it. So everyone had a Dot Brown wig. Except for Shiraz, who initially didn't have one. And then when he found one, just looked like Tina Turner. <laughs> Uh, there were some other celebrity people turned up. Obviously, we know Bill Bailey rocked up. That was amazing. I've got these photos. If anyone wants to see them later, tell me. And uh, Burger, who came as Don King. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, one of my personal favourites from the SAG was actually Alan. It was you on the jet ski, my friend. Oh, I've never seen anyth anyone so happy to do a single activity in their life. Until apparently the suit fitting, which you really enjoyed. 
some very attractive girls in there. Um, I didn't think we were going to get you back. You just went. I thought you were gone. Um, no man was left behind except briefly um, Dan Quintal. Where is he? He's so tall. How can I not see you right there? Um, who did? He didn't make it back. It was kind of Phil's fault. Phil, when we got back, we were like, "Where's Dan?" He was like, "Phil said, oh, was I supposed to bring him as well?" Um, he was left in the middle of Newquay on his own. Uh, it's fine. In the early hours. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant homing instincts. He was yeah. back by sunrise. Exactly. I believe. I believe the phrase in the morning. I was like, "Did anyone see Dan?" Yeah, he was wandering around shirtless in the car park at 5 a.m. So. All good. I'm made it home. Off. No problem. Uh, and the Zorb football. A little mention to the Zorb football because this is another Dave story about the person that he. He is and what has made him the guy we know and love. Um, Zorb football is kind of, you know, a, a big plastic Zorb. You wear one, it's kind of this big, and you wear it, and so essentially you can just run into each other at full tilt. Um, it's rather a dangerous game. Um, we nearly lost Shiraz. Not lost, we nearly yeah. lost Shiraz. Um, partly because of his decreasing fitness levels. He was inside, he goes, too hot! It's <laughs> <laughs> absolutely wonderful. He lasted about three minutes, he gave up. Um, but so day, part of Dave's success professionally in life and in sport is he has a rather strong competitive edge uh, and they, they played a game called last man standing uh, and Dave literally went around like a man possessed and he knocked everybody over everyone was on their ass except in one of great the, the greatest mismatches in history Dave and Shiraz um, and Dave not only won, obviously, um, there were goals at either end of the pitch. He physically scored a goal with Shiraz. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. This human ball soared into there. Dave just went off celebrating around the pitch. Um, absolutely magnificent. And it's one of the things that's made you such a great teacher. Your tenacity, your competitiveness. Uh, it also makes you someone that no one wants to play sport against. Um, of course, there was also... I did a quiz for the stag do, uh, for Dave. Um, it was all different things. It was designed to give him lots of drinking fines, let's be honest. He didn't drink at all, so it's okay. Um, and we, he, he had different rounds, music, um, film quotes, that kind of thing. Yay. It's okay, no one's looking at you. No one is looking at you. No, right. um, and Dave, particularly on the film quotes round, you got six out of six. Dave, uh, I feel the need. The need for speed. Every time. Uh, so you got six out of six on film quotes. There was a round, but uh, family and friends helped me devise this, and I was very grateful to them. And Sam helped me devise a round on her. Oh. And there were six mm. questions. And we got six <laughs> out of six on film quotes. <laughs> How many do you think he got in the round on Sam? <laughs> six. Three. <laughs> and guess which one that was? What does Sam consider Dave's best feature? His bum. He was like, bum! <laughs> um, actually, to be fair, in his defence, those were we gave him really tough ones just so I could do this in the speech. So his his questions from Sam were really quite brutal, um, but they were good. Um, and I asked Dave about Sam because I just said, "What is it? What kind of what, what does it meant to you meeting Sam?" And he said lots of different things tonight about her, which were beautiful and heartfelt. Um, and he said that it was a one in a million event to him. It's like fate. And if you've ever said to Dave during an Everton game when they're tuning up and cruising. Uh, oh, you're going to win this easy now. You know how superstitious. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! Talk about it, we're going to lose. He absolutely knows fate, so he knows where he speaks. Um, when he speaks about Sam, he says it in a way that, you know, you, you watch him do a speech tonight, you can't talk about someone that way unless there's something incredibly special going on. There's a surety of understanding of what he's talking about, which it does, it takes my breath away a little bit. Um, and it only comes from when you find something or someone so special in your life. Um, love's a difficult concept at the best of times. You can't pin it down, you can't pigeonhole it. It's something we all define for ourselves. And this might sound a bit daft, but if any of you have seen it, this is something which has always really struck home to me. Uh, when you go around to Dave's and you have a, a good night, um, even if we're staying in just singing to YouTube clips, that really happens way too often. <laughs> uh, it could be last night. Um, you sat there and you've, you've had a few to drink and you've, you've been singing karaoke and everyone's getting a bit tired. Dave pours himself one last massive glass of bread, which he has no intention of drinking. He always wakes up with it next to him. For 20 years he's been doing this. It's such a waste of wine, David. Um, and he's that, sat there and he starts to fall asleep on the sofa, but he doesn't want to go to bed because he doesn't want to go to bed before anyone else. No. And the look on Sam's face is... I mean, obviously it speaks of massive tolerance, um, <laughs> but there's just something in, that, in those moments, in those sweet little moments between people who are so comfortable with each other, but the, the enormous and the eternal affection, completely genuine. And I know it sounds really dark, but in those moments I've seen things with you guys that I was just like, wow, these guys are so going to get married. Uh, by the way, I was right. Um, and then I asked Sam to describe meeting Dave. Um, 
and she said actually meeting him or what it's meant to meet him and I was like well, that's a good idea both uh, and she said that meeting him as we've heard was a little bit surreal think of a half naked pole dancing person singing karaoke not her him obviously um, pretty standard Dave good night out um, then uh, she said and Sam you won't mind me using your actual words I hope um, she said and I have to read these because I thought this was uh, incredible uh, life-wise he's changed everything for me He's made me more confident. He makes me feel loved every single day. He knows when I need to be quiet and never questions it. Mm -hmm. I think that's an amazing thing to be able to say about somebody. Uh, so I wanted to use those those you words today. <laughs> Suck it up! Yeah. I have a pet. <laughs> um, and also, it's, it's quite incredible. He know he, he he knows when to be quiet. What? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> With his teacher's voice. Never. There's loads of teachers in this room. None of them are half as loud as you. <laughs> teacher's voice, indeed. It's a, nothing short of a miracle that he knows that. Um, and you must love him because he was waiting to do the London Marathon. What was that about? <laughs> Still working there. <laughs> um, to spend time with you as a couple, um, which I'm. I've, thrilled to have had many chances to do is to be happy and relaxed in your own skin because it's just mm -hmm. how you guys are with each other. Um, I'm very excited, uh, as you probably all know, I don't know, but they're, they're moving into their new home soon, it's, it's wonderful. I'm um, really excited to come and visit. I'm particularly excited about Ben and Dave's Noisy Den, which uh, Sam has Chris in the room, which we're getting been banished to um, so that she can sleep. Um, and meeting your two greyhounds, um, Peggy and the one with the really stupid name. Oh. Tasty. 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 You've got a dog called Tasty, what's that like? I think, I think Dave will cave and change it because he has to shout it in public, but he might not. <laughs> um, and I'll Tasty. obviously help you sample some fine wines. I know everyone here is genuinely overjoyed for both of you um, that you're starting this amazing new chapter together. I can't think of any two people who are more equipped to survive that journey, but more than anything, just to really enjoy the ride. And I know you guys will, and uh, I hope to share the odd night with you with a bottle of wine doing it. Um, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like you to be upstanding, please. I give you Mr. and Mrs. White, Dave and Sam. To Dave and Sam. Thank you very much indeed.